Here's a quick and simple way that I'm customizing my 3DS faceplates. So this is on my new 3DS non-XL, and I'm only customizing the front faceplate. You can do the back faceplate, but it has, you know, the game card lettering and the headphone jack embossed on there and the screw posts. It would just take a little bit longer, and I just feel like it's not really worth it. I'm using just these generic faceplates, these white ones. Uh, it would probably work on anything. The only thing I'd recommend is probably just match the base color of your 3DS as close as you can because you're still going to be able to see some of the edges here uh, and you just don't want it to like be some weird color that stands out super super big so uh, basically I've already done it here on this one I'm going to actually take this off to demonstrate it so I'll just remove that and uh, I'm just using some vinyl wrap it's made for like cars but you can use it on anything Stuff goes on really easily. Well, let's see. And it should come off fairly easily as well once I get it started here. It's just basically like a, a big sticker. So that kind of ripped. Let's see if I can get it better. This shouldn't damage your like face plates at all, but just in case, I again would recommend buying just some cheap generic face plates. Don't use the official Nintendo ones, just in case something goes wrong, you don't want to mess it up. Oh, it sticks on pretty good, but it comes off super nice. There's no you know, residue or anything like that. Nice and clean surface. Obviously, you want to start with a clean surface. So I've chosen some wrap here that I like. Just kind of this smoke tie-dye kind of design. You can kind of see that I just cut this bigger than the 3DS faceplate itself um, because I'm going to take this off, okay, and then just stick it on. And I kind of like start in the middle and then kind of work out from there. Just kind of helps work out any bubbles. So I've kind of got it loosely on there right now, and so I'm just going to go over with my thumbs and you know, starting from the middle, I'm going to push it out towards the edges. Again, the only thing really you have to worry about here is bubbles. But even then, this stuff is designed to allow those bubbles to work their way, work themselves out on their own over time. So it's not that big of a deal if you have some little bubbles in there. But and depending on the finish you go with on your wrap, uh, those bubbles may or may not appear. So I've got that pretty good. I'm going to make sure, well, I'll get I'll get around the edges here a little bit later once I get this trimmed down to size a little bit better. Okay, so that's kind of step one. Step two, you just want to take your razor here, um, make sure it's nice and sharp. And then this stuff slices through it like butter. So I'm just going to use the edge here of the plastic itself to run my razor along. I'm not digging into the plastic at all. Uh, you know, part of it may come off a little bit, but again, if you're using cheap replacement uh, face plates, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to kind of loosely go along here. We'll just rip that off. Just starting to get it trimmed down to size, you know, just not really, doesn't really matter too much. You can kind of work progressively on this, so just take your time. You notice these little tabs here, they're a little bit tricky to work work around, but again, not really that hard. So I'll just cut down through the middle there, and then I'll just kind of work my blade in there. Okay. Uh, let's see, maybe come in. Just pull that off. Okay. Getting it trimmed down closer to size here. Okay, Get in there, pull that off. Oh, it's stuck in my finger. Uh, okay, so then I just want to come and around here and I think I'm just going to start by taking away 
some of this excess. Oh, no. Sorry, my Mac just went to sleep and thought maybe it stopped. Okay. Cut that down a little bit. Let's do the same thing on this side. And if you like totally screw this up, you know, you can just peel it off and start over. I order my vinyl from MetroRestyling.com. I have no affiliation with them. I've ordered from them a couple of times for some different projects and they just have a great selection and quality options as well as size options. Uh, you'll probably have to order a lot more than you need for the color you want. They do have some options that come in just like a one foot by one foot sample size or something like that. But I just went and ordered like the minimum size roll for what I needed just because I wanted to have some extra because this stuff comes in handy. So now that I've got it basically cut to size, you can see that looks more or less terrible. And then we can just take our razor and I'm just going to, again, use that as a guide. Run it along finely. I'm not using any pressure here. Just kind of sliding it along. If your blade is nice and sharp, you know, I'd maybe even recommend starting with a new razor since they're cheap enough. Let's get that out of there. Let's see if I can get around the uh, little tab here. Okay. Uh, so a lot of the a lot of the time you're gonna spend on just kind of the finishing touches here. So you know we're like 90% of the way there, but it takes a while to get it perfect. Okay, now let's I'm gonna go with my finger here on this curved edge and just make sure that that's nice and wrapped around. Again, I'm Trying to get a good angle on this for you. Okay, and then this little notch here is a little tricky, but not too bad. that off. Yeah, it looks looking pretty good. Get around here a little bit better. Okay, and then let's go on the top edge here again and work our blade along that again. And see I'm just taking off like just a tiny amount. The vinyl wrap I find is pretty forgiving to work with. It doesn't rip or tear super easily. I think that's part of what makes this kind of possible. Really the only goal here is you just want to make sure that you have a more or less straight cut along. Depending on the angle you look at it, maybe you're going to see more or less. And, and really, the thing that makes a difference there is the angle you have your blade along it. So if you were to like just put it straight parallel, you'd get a little bit less. But I like to kind of go at maybe like a 45 degree angle here. Okay, just cleaning that up. It's pretty good there. Let's clean up this side. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Oh. 
my hands. All right, we got that edge done. Now let's work on this side. Wish I could get a better angle for you, but a little tricky to do it while still being able to see it. I'll make sure I show full 360 when I'm done. See, I nicked it there on the corner. Okay. Get that cleaned up. Let's get around these tabs. Here to do it on camera for sure. Okay, I'm liking that. Looks like maybe here on this corner I could take a little bit more off. It's looking pretty good to me. Let's make sure, go all the way around. Really, I think what I'm looking for is to make sure that none of it's overhanging at all, because if it overhangs, then there's just more chance that it could, you know, catch something and kind of start pulling up. So, but again, it's, it sticks on pretty well. So look at that. I like that. I think that's pretty good. You know, and if you put it on and you kind of notice, like here, I kind of took off a little bit too much, but I find that once it's on the console, it, it's less noticeable. So let's go ahead and pop this back on. Nice. So there you go. Now I have a more or less custom 3DS uh, faceplate. You could do the back, but you know, some of these bossings or this indent for the stylus and stuff like that is just going to make it more tricky. And you know, with the screws and everything, I just feel like it's not really worth it when you're playing it. You can't see the bottom part, and it's enough to customize it to make it uniquely yours, but still easy and you know, doesn't really damage the console at all. But there you go, that's how I customized my 3DS faceplate in 2023. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I think it's probably better than any of the official faceplates, and even if there was an official faceplate that looks better than this, it's probably unobtainable at this point. So I like that. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what you customized your 3DS faceplate with, and thanks for watching.